All right, cool. So today we're talking about sockets. Does anybody know what, what this technology allows us to do and what it's for? Communications. Communication. Real-time communication. Real-time Real communication. Player games. Player games. All right. Yeah, these are, these are all really good ideas. So basically the way that we've been looking at the request and response cycle thus far, what side always initiates that cycle? The client side, right? So we haven't had any situations where the server is initiating any communication. The server is always responding to things, but now we're gonna we're gonna enter a different paradigm where the server can actually push something back to either one or all of the clients as as it sees fit. Okay? Alright, cool. So in order to accomplish this, we're going to use a specific implementation of these things called web sockets. So if we go online and just do a search for web sockets, you can see here it's a commuter, uh, computer communications protocol providing full duplex communication channels over a single TCP connection. Yeah, sounds kind of complicated, right? All right, cool. And then there's this little diagram here. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see that very well. Oh, geez, I should have just looked at the picture. But yeah, these, these are sort of some different examples of things that could potentially use something like this. So if we had a news feed, we might want to be able to push out new news items to all the clients that are connected to that news feed, right? Or if we had a trading gateway, that would make sense to use something like sockets because these things are happening in real time. So th does anyone know if eBay is doing such a thing? Like if you go on a page and you're looking at a live auction, is it live updating the prices for you? Or do you have to refresh the page? No, I think you have to refresh the page. You have to refresh the page? Isn't that kind of sad? <laughs> <laughs> what, a, what a tragedy. Yeah, exactly. So once we kind of get some mastery of these concepts, you know who to uh, contact for employment, right? Just make your own eBay. Yeah, make your own eBay. All right. So let's, uh, let's start up a new project. All right, I will go to my Dojo folder, S, M, L, okay. And then we're just gonna make a director here, sockets, demo, and I will open that in my favorite, Connor's favorite, <laughs> sockets demo. Great, so we've got this folder. We're going to start a new project. What do we want to usually do when we start a project in this particular stack? We want to, yeah, we want to do npm init, and I'm going to use the dash y so that we get some auto there. Bam, is that what, did I hear there? Bam, yeah, it's pretty exciting. Okay, cool, so now we need to install our dependencies. Yeah, let's go with Express, right? An old favorite. Nah. <laughs> now, we'll skip EJS for this one. But uh, obviously, you know, for some assignments, it'll come in handy. All right, and then the other dependency we want to add is socket.io. So if we want to see the docs for this, we can go to socket.io and then learn documentation right here. Okay. <clears throat> so this should be done installing for us. Perfect. Let's just create a little, um, I don't know, app.js or something like that. So we'll go code app.js. All right. What do I need to require here? Yeah, we're going to do that. Oh, come on. Express. All right, what do we usually do next? Okay, we'll create an application, right? Which is set to what? So 
will invoke the express function. Okay, and normally we would just do something like this. We'd say app.listen on whatever port we want to listen to, right? So if we were doing like 3900, oh, then basically we'd be done. But in this case, since we're using sockets, we actually need to save a reference to this, okay? The app that is listening on that specific port. So what I can say is const server equals what results from that app listening on this port. Okay, cool. So anybody who has done any of these sockets assignments, do you remember what comes next? Yeah, so it would look like something like this, right? We'll require socket.io and then invoke that against server. Yeah, exactly. Whoops. Let me drop in there. Why does it say encapsulate? Oh, I've got an I've got an extension that I installed. I believe it's called import cost or something like that. Yeah, import cost. So you guys can install that too if you want to see how heavy your dependencies are that you bring into your various files. Okay, cool. So now we've got this. Now, what do we want to do with this IO variable that we created? Yeah. I know some of you guys have done the, uh, these assignments. All right, so we want to establish some, some event handlers. So the way that we would do that, io.on, and then I believe the event we're looking for is a connection event, right? So what that means is that some new client has just connected to us. And then does anyone know what the second argument of this is going to be? Yeah, so usually we would have an event as the first first thing, and then the second argument is going to be the actual callback function. Okay? So in this case, the callback function is going to have one argument, which is the socket itself. This is the individual connection of the client that is just connected to the server. So we'll create this little callback function. I'm going to use arrow notation as well. So if that causes trouble for you guys, just let me know. All right. And then inside there, <clears throat> I can do some different things. So I could potentially send a message back to all the clients that are connected. I could send a message back to this specific client that just connected. Or I can send a message to all the clients but this one. It's you every time, isn't it? All right. So, um, so there are a number of different things we can do. I think what we're going to do for now is we'll just set up a count variable to kind of keep track of how many different clients are connected to us at any given point in time, right? So we'll say let count. Why am I using let? Sorry, we're on scope. Hoist. Why let as opposed to cost is what, what I'm asking. About. I want to be able to change it, right? Otherwise, if I make a cost, I cannot reassign that value at all. Can't change it. All right, so let's make it zero. And then when we connect, when somebody connects to us, what do we want to do with that count? Increment it. Okay, so we can just console log out um, a little message here. We'll just say we have, and then we'll put the count in there, connections currently. Jeez, connect 
<laughs> it was creative spelling, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Typing speeds off the chain. All right, cool. So we got some basic logic in here, but uh, what's the side that we haven't really touched yet? So this is all server side, right? We haven't touched the client side yet, right? Okay, so let's uh, let's rectify that issue. Maybe we'll just create a little views, or we'll call it our static folder, whatever. And inside my static folder, I'm just going to have an index.html. This is just going to be where we where we do all of our stuff because we're not really going to need EJS for this one. Index.html. Some stuff in h1 sockets demo. Okay. And then inside that static folder, I may also drop in a JavaScript file. So this is where we'll do all of our, our uh, client side logic. So let's just say index.js. Okay. So I need to also load that JavaScript file inside this, right? So how can I do that? Script src. And then um, before we actually finish that up, let's come back in here and actually make it so that we can handle these static files, right? Does anybody remember how we do that? App.use. Okay, what else do I need? Express.static. And I'm going to invoke that, and what am I going to pass inside there? Dunderder name plus static, right? Okay, so this means that if I hit my just my localhost 3900, what should I get back? I'm just going to get that index.html, right? OK, cool. And then now that we've got this done, we can go back here to our, I guess we'll call it our template. But here, I'm just going to load up index.js, right? OK. Is it good practice to use the template at the bottom of the body, or does it matter? Yeah, it, it may actually matter in some cases. So if, if we don't want our JavaScript parsing to get in the way of the, the page rendering, we may want to throw it down at the bottom of the body. Good call. Yeah, in fact, let's just do that. Bring it down here. OK, and then what's the other thing that we're going to need here? Because this is going to be all of our logic, but we're also using an outside library. So how are we going to handle that part? Yeah, there, there's some different ways. We can we could potentially load it up from a CDN if we want a content delivery network or, or distribution network. Or we can just load it locally because we've, we've installed socket.io, which means that we should be able to just serve that file from our project, right? So let's just say, whoops, next, script. OK, and then the source here, let's just say it's going to be socket.io.js. OK, and, I'm, and notice that I'm loading this from my project itself. So what change do you think we're going to have to make to our server? Is our server yet set for this this one? OK. Yeah, there are potentially some different ways that we can handle it. But let's go into our app.js. And we'll say, I'll just set up a route for it. Oops. OK, so if I just go app.use, and then the route that I'm looking for is just going to be socket. .io.js, 
Then I'm going to have this little callback function. So the request doesn't really make any difference. And then what can I send back? So I want to send back this file that's in my node modules. Okay. So I'm going to go dunder dir name plus node modules. And then if we look inside here, we'll see all of our mountains of dependencies. Actually, they're not too horrible right now. But I've got this socket.io-client, and then inside there, there's a dist folder. And then inside there, I've got socket.io.js. So that should be the path that we can take to include this file right here, which is what the, uh, what the client needs. Okay. Any questions about this before we start doing this? And that and that was routing into node modules? Yeah. Somehow? That's that's what the client can say in the list. Without having to do like a run or pass that code. Alright. I'll look into that later for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what <are> you? <laughs> Well, this is, this is kind of how I prepared to just show you guys. Um, but maybe that is the superior approach. I'll check into it. So if we want to route into node modules, and then specifically we want to go to socket.io-client, dist, and then the file that we want is socket.io.js. And that should be good, right? All right, so let's get the project actually started. We want to use NodeMon so that we get that hot reloading. Bless you. Oh. All right, and let's see if we can load something up here on port 3900. Oops. Second here. Okay, localhost. 3900, sockets demo, okay, let's see what's happening here, okay, so everything's at least loading properly because we didn't get any console errors, it's not giving us, it is giving us a 404 on the favicon, but you guys don't need to worry about that, so that doesn't matter, right, we were able to, I believe, load up our actual files, which is good, let me just open this up for you. So notice that we got a 200 OK on the socket.io.js. We also had a 200 on our index.js, all right? But we don't have anything in our index.js, so we got to put some code in there, right? So let's go, whoop, let me shut this out. So inside our static folder, again, we've got this index.js. And for those of you who have done sockets, what do I need to do now? Yeah, we can do that. So document dot add event listener DOM content loaded. And then I'll just have this anonymous function that's gonna do some stuff, right? Okay. So how do I create my socket now on the client side? Yes, yeah, so we can make a variable called socket to the result of invoking the IO function. Right? Okay, now that we have this socket here, we can actually attach some different events that we're interested in listening for. So let's just create socket dot on. And then the event that we're going to listen for, at least initially, is just going to be new connection, or I don't know, we'll say new user, something like that. 
Okay? And then the second argument that this on will take is going to be, again, a callback function, right? We've gotten kind of used to this whole system. We listen for something, and then we pass a function that we want to have happen when that thing occurs. Okay, so I can create a function that takes in some data, and then inside my function, I'm just going to console log out what the data is. You guys all okay with this? Yeah? All right, great. So now inside my, um, inside my server here, what do I want to do when, when I have one of these new connections? I want to alert everyone that, hey, there's a new user of the app, somebody who's now connected that wasn't before. Yeah, so, in, so what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to emit this to all of the connected clients. And the way that I'm going to do that is by saying io.emit. Okay, so when we emit an event, the first argument that we pass is going to be the name of the event. And I think the event that I created on, on the client side was new user, right? So I want to alert everyone there's this new user. And then we'll just pass some data in there. So I can make data of whatever form that I want. I'll just make it an object. Um, I don't know. Let's say, let's say the ID is actually the current count, right? OK, so if user 5 comes along, that user's ID will be 5, something like that. Okay, so when we emit that, and then on the client side, let me close this real quick. On the client side, we're just going to log back out what happened there. So let's test this out. If I go back here and refresh this page, let's look at our console. So notice how on, on the client side, I got this little object here that says ID of 1. So where did that come from again? came from the server because the server emitted this event called new user and it had an object with some information about that new user, just the user's ID. All right. Yeah, so let's, uh, let's open up, I'll do a private incognito window and then we'll open up the what? Incognito, yeah, we're going going down under here. <laughs> okay, so let's go to 3,900. Okay, so there's ID of two, right? This is my, the second connection for my, my app. Cool, so that's one of the types of events that we can emit from the server is by using io.emit, and again, that will go to all of the connected clients. What if I wa only wanted to send something back to a single client being the one who just connected to me? Mm -hmm. So now what we would do is we'd say socket.emit and I'll make the name of this event message or let's just call it a welcome event. And then maybe the data would be some object that had a message, welcome to my app. OK? So again, this is, this is all happening on the server side. What do I need to do on the client side to be able to, to respond to this? Display it. Yeah, we could display it or we could just keep using the console, right? Um, let's keep going with the console because we're just kind of like playing around with things here. But so according to this, 
when I had the new user event come in, then I had some response to that, right? What do I need to do now that I have a second event that I'm, I'm listening for, or I want to be listening for? I have to attach it to the, the socket again. So I have to now listen for a second event, which is going to be welcome message. Socket.on, welcome. Did I call it welcome message? Oh, no, welcome. OK, so just for welcome, what if I just pass in console.log here? People will yawn. <laughs> Yeah, it's just going to print out what the what the welcome message was, right? So let's do this. Our app should be refreshing. So let's go back to our non-incognito one. Refresh that. And notice how we've got this welcome to my app right here, right? Same thing if I go to my other incognito window. If I refresh this now, welcome to my app. Yeah, so something interesting happened. The ID was not, we weren't decrementing when people disconnected, right? So that could be kind of an issue. Let's do that, right? Let's decrement when somebody is disconnected from our server. So if we go up into our app here, we can do socket on and then there's a, I can never remember if it's disconnect or disconnection. Does anybody know? <laughs> so helpful. <laughs> disconnect, yeah. Disconnect. Uh, it's just disconnect. Yeah, okay. So when we have that happening, what we want to do is we want to take our count and just decrement it, right? So I'll just do this little arrow function here and we'll do count minus minus. And let me restart the server real quick. So if I go like this. Okay, so that's user two. And then user one was this guy here. Okay, now what happens if I disconnect this guy? So that worked right, right? Our count actually decremented when, when we disconnected. Okay. Any questions so far? I'm seeing a lot of like tired and confused faces. All right, so let's just briefly um, touch on the other possible event types that we can do. So we did this one where we're emitting to all of the sockets, right? We also did another one where we were just emitting to this specific socket, this one that just connected with us. We can also have a different type that will go to all of the sockets but this one. So what if I just wanted to alert everyone else there's this new user, but I don't really need to alert the one that is the actual new user, right? Anyone know how I can do that? Nobody? No. No, we can just use... Um, so let's see. What if I say io.broadcast.emit? Okay, so this broadcast message means that we're going to go to everyone except this individual socket here. All right. So we'll just say, um, I don't know, we'll call this a broadcast. And then what I want to include in here, we'll just say a message is some new user just joined 
it is not you. <laughs> okay. Whoa. I think I stopped my server here. Uh oh. Did I mix that up? Oh, no, no, it's socket tap broadcast, right? Okay, so, so let's do this. Okay, so notice how when I load up the page, I do not get this new event. Well, have we listened for this event yet? <laughs> Even I forget. It's like, you have to do everything on both sides, right? So we're, we're emitting this event now on the server, on the back end. But we also still need to listen to it on the front end, otherwise the front end doesn't even know anything about it. So let's go back to our front end code here. Yeah, and then we'll do socket.on. Broadcast. And again, we'll just console log it out. Okay, so when I refresh this page, am I expecting that console log for the broadcast? No, because right now, this is the only user of the app. Okay, so that broadcast should go to everyone else, not this user. So let's reload it. Okay, but if I open up a new private window, I should see inside here, a new user has joined, it's not you because of the new private window. So let's do that. So let's go new incognito window, localhost 3900. Let's go back here. Okay. So now again, we're broadcasting to everyone but that specific user. And if I go into the terminal on that um, incognito window here, all we're seeing were these objects here. This user doesn't yet have the whole, um, there was a new user joined, it wasn't you, right? But if I open up a new tab, say in Brave, what is Brave? <laughs> it's awesome. It's pretty cool. It's, it's just a, another browser that's actually built on top of Chromium, and it's a little bit more privacy focused, so it does ad blocking by default. So let's open up browser console, and let's go here again. Okay, so again, this person doesn't have the new user joined, it's not you, because this is the user who just joined, right? But I would expect to see that message in the other two tabs that I have open currently. So if I go back here, you can see that message logged again. And then if I go back to my original guy, I can see now this message is logged twice, right? Because two new users joined after this one joined. So that's pretty much the bulk of it, is that we're going to have these three main e event types that we can emit from the server. There's either going to be an, e an event that goes to all of the sockets, one that goes to that specific socket that connected to us, or um, one that goes to everyone but that socket that just connected to us. And you can even send... Um, messages to sockets by ID as well. So let's just log out the actual so socket real quick so we can take a look at it. So when somebody connects us connects to us, let's just log the socket. Open this up real quick. So notice that this is a really monstrous object. There should be a, an ID in here somewhere. Did anyone see it? IDs, socket, 
Suck it. Right there. You saw, I saw IDs, yeah, but that's not the one I wanted. I wanted ID. Ah. Oh, there it is. So note that, that you might think that that ID would be a great way to identify a connection. The only slight issue with that is that if a person refreshes his or her page, the ID is going to change because you're going to have like a whole whole new connection. So Connor was asking the other day about potentially sharing some session data between Express Session and, um, and Sockets, and, and there is a dependency that would allow you to do that. Post that up on okay. So that might come in handy if you guys had some sort of login involved in your app, and you wanted to use Sockets at the same time, so you could share it. Any questions about this before we wrap it up? It's the tiring moment, I can tell. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yes, can you, anything. Can you go over to the index.js again? For what's it for? That's the, the client side? This is happening on the client side, yeah. So let's talk about this. Let's close this out. And that's in the scripts in the HTML. Right, so down here, I actually, first I loaded up the socket.io.js, because we needed that. This script that we created is depending upon that, right? So if I reverse the um, order, what would happen? So if I reverse the order, we're going to have an issue here, because we're trying to invoke this I.O. function, but that I.O. function won't even be available to me, right? Because... I haven't yet loaded that script. Although, it may be available by the time the DOM content is loaded. I'm not positive about that. So remember, th this callback function is running once the DOM content has been loaded. Okay. So we could kind of get away with it, potentially. I'm not sure. I don't know if you guys want to test it. But, uh, <laughs> all right. um, but the point is, you definitely want to make the scripts that you're what you're depending upon in your own scripts, include those first. Right? That way you, you can know for sure they're available. So let's just talk about what we're doing in here. Um, line one, Ivan. Yeah, so when the DOM content has loaded, we're going to run this callback function, right? All right, cool. So let's assume that the DOM content has loaded, and we're now inside this callback function running. Line two, Brian. Sure. Yeah, we're setting it to the result of invoking the I.O. function, right? Okay, good. Uh, next line four, long. Okay. So we're attaching to the socket object a listener for the new user event, right? And then we're creating this callback here that's going to do something. Now, this callback obviously hasn't, wouldn't be invoked right away. Why not? What's that? No. Event hasn't yet occurred. Yeah, exactly. So when JavaScript is parsing this, it's just attaching these listeners, but that doesn't mean that the event has happened yet, right? Okay, cool. So let's say that event hasn't happened yet. We move down here to line eight. Michael, what's happening there?
So again, what does the dot on mean? means that I want to attach a listener for when this event occurs. And then what what callback do I want to run when this event occurs? I want to just console log it. Where does the dot on define the uh, listener? So that's ha that's actually inside the uh, socket.io code. They're basically setting up the interface. How is this going to work with a client's code. Okay. So they set it up so that we can add event listeners to that socket. Okay, line 10. Tom. So we're adding an event listener again to the socket, only this time we're listening for a broadcast event. All right? And then what are we going to do when that event fires? We're going to console log, which means that we're going to, it's going to log out whatever data came back with that particular event. All right? So let's, um, let's assume for one second here that the new user event has fired. What's going to happen now, Miguel? Exactly. So potentially if we got some data back from the server, we're just going to console log it, right? But now if, if you guys were building something that was for users to use, rather than doing this, what, what might we want to do with that data? Yeah, we might want to append it to some div or whatever we're doing, right? Or if we have a new user, let's say we're building a chat application, and we want to know what that user's name is, what would we do once a, once a user had, say, submitted his or her name in our little form? Maybe we would just have an input with a name. What would we then do? Show the name on the site. Show what? Yeah, we might do that for themselves, but let's say I want to I want to alert everyone else that's connected to my app that hey, this new user just joined, and I want them to know that new user's name because the new user just told me what the name is. Right, but how but how do we do that though? Okay, so so it's kind of a two step process. At first, the client side needs to send this information back to the server because I've now just entered in my name and I've pressed enter or whatever. Now that the server has that information, what's the server going to do? Broadcast it? Yeah, server's going to do one of two things. It's either going to broadcast to everyone but this specific socket or the server is just going to broadcast to everyone. Now, all of those individual sockets will be listening to some event like that, like I'm listening for a new user. And then when that happens, I can do something on the page to alert any one of these, you know, all of these sockets. Hey, Anthony just joined. Hey, Michael just joined. All right. So the key thing is that each individual socket Let's ask ourselves, can, can any individual socket directly connect another socket? So if I've got Ivan and Long both using my app, can they directly connect, contact each other? <laughs> no. no, right? They can, can, they can contact each other through the server, but not directly. Okay, so the server is kind of like acting as the intermediary there, right? What about if they did the sharing ID session data? Well, yeah. So, but that would that wouldn't really change anything. Would it? 
Because the session data is only for that specific user. It's not for the whole pool of users. So that's the thing. They still need to, to emit something back to the server, and then the server can properly emit something to that individual client that they're trying to connect to. All right. I know this is kind of difficult to sort of wrap your, your heads around, so um, I'm hoping the thumbs aren't too terrible right now. <laughs> Let's have a look. <laughs> thumbs on this. Yeah, some wavering. Any clarifications we can do before we uh, break? The key thing to sort of understand is that when you're working with sockets, we have these two sides and we have to do something with, with both sides. So if I'm going to have an event on this side, well, I also need to have a listener on the other side to listen, right? So you didn't use a ping pong analogy. Ah. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, I like that. So if so, if I'm hitting a ball to the other side of the table, right? There's got to be another player over there ready to return that ball to me. Otherwise, I'm you know I'm just playing with myself. <laughs> that didn't sound right, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Can you give an example when we would use sockets or for? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were kind of talking about this in the beginning, but if we have some sort of a real time application. So let's say I was selling. What's um, real time? Sorry. What? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, chat app is sort of the most obvious implementation of that. But let's say I was selling tickets for airlines or something like that, right? This stuff is changing constantly. So if somebody just bought a ticket at this price, well, maybe I no longer have any more tickets available at that price. So I may want to emit an event to all the connected clients that may be interested in that price. This is no longer available. available. Or make some change on their page so that it now reflects you can't buy this anymore. All right? Okay. So this can be used in place of Ajax in like some circumstances? Yeah, it, it's sort of like Ajax in the sense that we can constantly be sending you know data and requests back to the server but the the difference here is that we also get the benefit of being able to send from the server back to the client whenever we want right, right? at any time so if an API doesn't support web sockets <laughs> um well I mean you could you could still use it on your app but yeah obviously you may you may end up having to send more requests to them than you'd like if you know if, if they did support sockets then they can kind of alert you when something happened that would be kind of nice but anyway it's cool it's cool technology that you guys can play with especially during project week it tends to be kind of a hit with people they like to build things with sockets all right cool i'll uh, dismiss you guys to hop to it <laughs>